Good evening, my name is Ashraf Garda and welcome to tonight's special assignment. The multi-billion dollar business of illegal tobacco smuggling continues to give authorities sleepless nights. More so because it is increasingly being associated with the funding of other crimes such as drugs and human trafficking. Authorities invest a lot of resources into trying to curb this crime. But alongside this are other types of smugglers referred to as tobacco mules. Tonight we bring you an insight into what happens along the Zimbabwe-South Africa border regarding this highly profitable method of tobacco smuggling. God knows Nare has the report. Illegal trading of cigarettes is a multi-billion rand business. It's a world of syndicates and gangs. More and more of its proceeds are used to fund organized crime. But alongside this exists another world of smaller traders who travel kilometers and cross dangerous rivers with illegal cigarettes. For some, the rush for the gold leaf means high returns, but for others it means exploitation and sometimes death. It's 2 p.m. on a Sunday afternoon, 50 kilometers east of the official border post between Zimbabwe and South Africa. This group of young men has been traveling for the past five hours and at the same time evading the police because they have just picked up illegal cigarettes from Zimbabwe. They are called tobacco mules who transport illegal cigarettes across the two countries every day. On any given day, there are about 20 to 30 groups doing the same thing with a low level of arrest, but they are busiest at night. When I was working there in Jobbik, uh, I worked for, I think, for eight months. Then I earned my salary, then I went back home. So it was difficult for me to go back to Jobbik because I didn't have uh, proper traveling documents. That's when I came here to Messina and I started smuggling business. Most of these men are asylum seekers in South Africa who are unemployed and desperate for any means of survival. They are hired by traders who move the goods between the two countries and get paid between 50 rand and 300 rand per box of 20 cartons, which gives the trader about 7,000 rand. From Arari firstly, and to come here in Bed Bridge. So from there in Bed Bridge, we take, we take on, uh, oh, some guys and also me have been included there. We take the cigarettes, then we come to the river, then we take those, uh, we put on the sacks, uh, that begs you, the sacks, you know, the sacks, mm, that yeah. one, yeah. We take that sacks and put those uh, box of cigarettes inside, then we try to cross the border, but, uh, the bridge, but uh, it's hard to cross, just because now you see, now there is a lot of water in the river, so it's hard to cross. Then it's, uh, it seems like the business now is low. It's very hard to, to cross through that river because uh, there are many dangers inside there. But sometimes uh, the situation that forces us because we don't have money, so we just to force ourselves to carry that down. They said, oh, where well, there is a crocodile, and there is another side there is, that doesn't have a crocodile, you see. So uh, we'll make sure that side there is no crocodile for sure. Then we would go with that side, then we cross the river. Patrols like these are conducted everywhere along the border to catch transgressors, but the syndicates are always ahead of the law. <laughs> They easily evade arrests and through a highly organized operation, once the carriers emerge from the river, there is already a car waiting for them. But sometimes the police are allegedly implicated in ensuring the successful movement of their consignments. This is Brigadier Angwani Mulawuzi of the South African Police Services in Limpopo. He says he is aware of some of his members' involvement in this crime. We also cannot rule out the fact that uh, our police members are also involved in this thing. 
uh, because it is very very disturbing to find that whilst we are curbing this thing uh, we hear of illegal cigarettes that have been confiscated somewhere in Gauteng. Uh, obviously they have passed through Mosina, they have passed a plus minus 15 or 18 police stations uh, in Limpopo uh, to, 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 to Gauteng. From here the goods are now headed to Mosina after which they will end up in Johannesburg where they are hoping to make significant profit. I am a senior who said it is about 2.5 to 2,000. Okay, okay. So they say in Jobek, how much? Jobek is 4.5. Coming up next, more on tobacco mules. We meet another group of tobacco mules who have come to pick up a consignment that has been left by another group the previous night. These boxes are destined for Johannesburg and for about 10 of these boxes, the trader stands to make between 60 and 70,000 rands. <laughs> From here, they have to walk all the way to a spot a few kilometers before Musina, where the same taxi will once again pick them up. If they know there's a roadblock somewhere here, they can walk. It's a, it's a long journey. So people, be, they use some people to carry those boxes. That's how maybe they can pay them about 50 rand per box. Then they can, they can take them to that third road. There's another third road there. Then they can meet there. They load their cigarettes, then they go. If they are in connection with the soldiers or with the police, they can just do it. They know. Even those people, they can help them. Along the way, many things can happen. One of them could have already sold them out to a rival group and given out information about their plans. These people, they try to rob each other. If they discover that you are trying to rob us, they are for sure they can kill you. Yeah, it's very risky. They can kill you. Because even those people, they used to carry those cigarettes. Imagine if they, they ask someone to carry some cigarettes from here up to there. You can just maybe hide some boxes. And then you come back and say, Ish, we are being chased away, so I threw those boxes and they were taken. Mm. You see, they won't just leave you like that. Mm. No, they will torture you, those people. They will even kill you. Because they know it's a plant, it's a plant of money. Mm. If you tell the owner that, ah, I lose two boxes. How? He wants to know how. How did you lose them? Ah, maybe you can just say, I was being chased or something caught. happened or, or even I was caught or just anything. That's why they will beat you. Maybe they can kill you. Because he knows that he, if you lose two boxes, maybe you lose something like 5,000 rands. It is a lot of money to him. Or they can be robbed or even killed by the Kumakumas, a gang that controls the bush and prey on people they come across along the border. This is a common loading point, where robberies also take place. These boxes are evidence of such robberies by Kumakumas. After walking for 10 kilometers, now they are close to Musina. They are waiting for a pickup car that earlier dropped them off on the other side. When the car arrives, there's no time to waste. To make this operation a success, it is important to get a good driver who can speed should a need arise. So, <laughs> I'm still 
re-offload as well with the folder here, ZT. Musina is the gateway to other parts of Africa. It's a small cosmopolitan town of very industrious people who literally survive through hustling. This is where the dealers are waiting for their cigarettes and they quickly have to be moved to Johannesburg. Roadblocks and searches are done on the freeway but smugglers use escort cars that go to check whether or not there are roadblocks. Sometimes the police do manage to arrest the smugglers. We arrested about 64 uh, suspects. Uh, the value of the illegal cigarettes that we confiscated coming through the country is more than 8 million rands. So it shows you the value and the BM and as well as the the intentions of these people to make sure that uh, these illegal cigarettes come through, you know, and be distributed in South Africa. Once the cigarettes reach Johannesburg, it is distributed to vendors in small shops. Johannesburg is the biggest market for these illegal cigarettes. The cigarettes are usually not displayed publicly, but are easily accessible to those looking for it. We sent this man to one of the shops to find out how easy it is to buy illegal cigarettes. According to SARS, buying illegal cigarettes has far more serious implications for the country. The perception of buying a packet of cigarettes far below the normal cost price is that it's fine. You are making a saving as a consumer. You're actually not. What you're actually doing is you are funding maybe organized crime or the proceeds of organized crime that you may be unaware of. When you buy a packet of cigarettes for 14 or 15 rand, you must know that it is far below the commercial retail price, um, that taxes and duties are being evaded, that you are taking away revenue from the state and the fiscus and the country. We are developing the capability to work better in a more informed way with other law enforcement agencies to detect uh, this kind of trade, secondly to act upon it, and thirdly um, to trace the flow of money through potential money laundering. So what impact does this trade have on the South African economy? We'll get some answers after this. The business of tobacco smuggling is huge around the globe. The goods move through different routes, the bulk of which come from Zimbabwe in containers. Of the estimated 28 billion cigarettes consumed per year, 20 billion was legal. The rest was illegal. Some illegal cigarettes come from Dubai and Asia. We have identified the illicit trade and the escalation thereof as the biggest single threat to the sustainability of the legal tobacco industry in this country and in the region. Uh, it is a massive problem. It was non-existent about 15 years ago. It has grown this year to probably more than 24% of the total market. It finds its way into the South African market via various uh, routes uh, to divert, to take the attention away from one route, but it comes from Zimbabwe via air, via road, rail and sea. It goes through other countries like Zambia, Botswana into South Africa. It goes through Mozambique, through Swaziland into South Africa. It sometimes goes right around our country to Namibia and then down. It sometimes by air even goes up to the DRC and then down to South Africa. So all routes, multiple routes, all end up in South Africa because this is A, where the market is, and B, this is where the duties are high. And if the duties are not paid, that's where the, where, that's where the profit margins are made. Our biggest problem that we see in terms of smuggling of these products comes at our northern borders uh, where tobacco is grown and tobacco is imported into South Africa in many instances illegally. Um, it may then be manufactured here. So we have phenomenons where uh, what we call round tripping, where a tobacco may be imported into the country, the tobacco product, a cigarette may be manufactured here. It is then destined for export and it is declared as such to customs. When people export those products, they can then claim rebates from the state. However, the goods may actually never leave the country. They then make their way back into the economy 
They are sold in various ways of informal trade. And really the person manufacturing and defrauding customs makes a double profit. There has been a significant breakthrough recently, such as the arrests of two of the country's biggest muddlers, Walter Cyril and Leticia Pillay. Two SARS officials were also arrested in the same house along with these criminals. More and more criminal syndicates are beginning to focus on tobacco, specifically for those reasons. There's a, a lower risk margin than other forms of illicit trade. There's higher potential for, to make money quicker. And of course, there is a huge supply of these things readily available within the subcon or, or within sub-Saharan Africa. Money from tobacco smuggling is also used to fund other crimes. Authorities admit that policing this particular crime remains a difficult task. Metropolis constantly raid illegal cigarette traders, but with little success. Uh, 20 mega is 10 rand, and then a remittal gold is uh, 10 rand, and the dollars is 10 rand, and the Pacific is 10 rand, and the state is 27, and the quarterly 28, Kinskate is 20 rand. The cost to the country is not only in rents and cents. Despite the 3 billion rent loss, the state and the industry each suffered in 2010. The health cost to the country is immeasurable because the safety of the products cannot be ascertained. When you look at tobacco smuggling and the real risks to us as a country, the risk of uh, health uh, and safety, because a legitimate packet of cigarettes would have specific health standards, that the manufacturer had, has to abide by. Now often when illicit goods come into the country, they find their way into the mainstream economy. Uh, they are produced without adhering to any specific health standards, without any regard for the consumer. And over time, the cost implication of that manifests itself in people getting sick, uh, in health costs that the state at the end then has to subsidize. Industry body Tisa says it's concerned about its survival. Franjoa van der Merve is also one of about 200 tobacco farmers in the country. They say while the industry is currently stable, the picture going forward looks gloomy. We always say to farmers, uh, illicit trade does not only impact on, you, on, on manufacturers, it also impacts on you as farmers because you produce high quality tobacco, you comply with the letter and the spirit of the law, you are good citizens, you are good farmers, uh, you employ people and you help build this country. However, illeg illegitimate manufacturers uh, do not have any concern about compliance. This problem can only be solved uh, in partnership between us and, and the governments in the region. And the best way to do that is to work cross-border, to establish cross-border forums between us as TISA and the governments in the region. One has to think carefully what punitive measures, what sanctions can work and how they can work effectively. And I think that's the issue policymakers should think about going into the future. Currently we have two operations that are running. We can't reveal those operations. Uh, it's led by our commercial crime units from the organized crime. And uh, we, we are hopeful that uh, once we infiltrate some of these uh, 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 big uh, syndicates, we will be able to, to cap this, 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 uh, this thing. Meanwhile, back in Musina, it continues to be business as usual as more and more mules cross the border with illegal cigarettes. And at the same time, traders are raking in significant profits 
with absolute impunity. Now, I'm sure you have strong views on the illegal tobacco trade. Well, let us hear them, and you can do so by tweeting under the hashtag special assignment. You can also Facebook or email us, and you have a chance to call in on this matter on my radio show. That's on SAFM Radio on Friday at 2 p.m. Now, we received a huge response on the story on poverty in Ferdwal. I've picked out two. Charmaine van der Yefer emailed, saying, please let the responsible people explain why we still have this type of tragedy 17 years into a democracy. This is sick. And Papi Molali wrote on Facebook, I blame social development for not properly documenting that family. They just want to sit in their air-conditioned offices instead of going out and doing proper field work. Well, remember that you have the opportunity to get another viewing of this show and previous ones on the SABC News website. That's sabc.co.za forward slash news. And do email us if you have stories you believe we need to investigate. That's it from me. Join us again next week when we point out the issues that matter.